Welcome back fellow Blender users to another animation nodes tutorial and in this one we're going to be talking about the transforms input node since last time we only talked about the transforms output node. So it makes sense to distribute our love to all these nodes so we get a better understanding of how animation nodes works in general. So just like last time we're going to be incrementing upwards in difficulty and baby steps so make sure you watch the last tutorial and this time we're just going to build a little bit off of that. So again we need to set up our workspace so that it's compatible compatible with animation nodes. By that I mean we should collapse our properties window and bring this halfway is what I like to do. And for this one we keep it as a 3D viewport and of course for this one we make it a animation nodes window. Okay, so you should be pretty familiar with the setup, and I think for this one, what we're going to be trying to do is take an object like this and use its coordinates, again, hit N to see the location coordinates, rotation, Euler coordinates, whatever you want to think of it as, and our scale coordinates. We want to take these and have it manipulate a different object. So let's shift D. So now we have a second cube. And we're going to use this cube right here to manipulate cube 001. Should be pretty easy. So, just like last time, we have a very simple recipe. We have an object that we want animation nodes to look at, and we want to do something with that object. So, we're going to add in an object node just to tell animation nodes to know that this cube even exists. So, either go to add, or, or actually, first of all, make sure that you actually add in a node tree. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, click new. We're going to call this, I guess it's the third tutorial. Okay, so we have our node tree, and again, this is where we put our nodes, and now we want to add in our nodes, so either add or shift A, and at this point, since we already know that the object should be at the top here, we want this object node, we can actually look it up without going through all these menus, so instead of shift A, hit control A, so not shift A, control A, and that gives us the search menu, kind of like the F3 menu that you can look for a bunch of commands here. So control A and we're going to look for object and in this case we're inputting. So we're reading information from an object. That's a constant theme here. Input versus output. So this is object input. There we go. So you should be familiar with this node already. And we want to pull information from this cube right here, which is just called cube. So we can either search for it right there or of course use the eyedropper. And lastly, we can have the selected and use this eyedropper, which pulls from our selection. Okay, so now we have our object stored in this node, and this time we want to pull information from it. Somebody described it in a comment in the last video as getting versus setting. So we're getting information, so that's input. So let's do shift A, since we don't know what this is called yet, object, and then transforms input. There it is. So we're going to add this right here, and like always, you see this black circle right here, and this one right here, which kind of implies they're compatible. So we're going to take this object and input it into this node. So basically, this is storing all our location, rotation, and scale data from this object over here. And we can either view this information from here, of course, we can see it right here and also manipulate it, or we can actually do it from the node window itself. So how do we do that? Well, what you want to do is click W, just like last time, and this time instead of putting a data input, which by the way, if you do this, it's going to let you put in an object, because this is the only input for this node, but we can just hook that back up. So this time we're going to hit W and do a viewer, and you can choose if you want to view the location, rotation, or scale. I'm going to do location. And you're going to get this kind of debugger or viewer, whatever you want to call it, and it's actually showing us the data that is stored right here in this location. And we have three entries. It's a three-dimensional vector, as we'd expect, for X, Y, and Z. So for X, it says we have negative 0.12, which seems accurate. For Z, well, we have Y as well, but for Z, we have 2.292. And that is accurate as well. And this updates live. So this is just a way to actually see what is stored inside parts of our node. But it doesn't actually do anything. It just shows us the information. So we have that. We can also view our rotation. So this one has 0, 0, 0. And notice that it says it's an Euler. Because, again, we're using degrees, radians, and we're dealing with rotation. Which is different from the vector input-output of location and scale. So this one also updates. And I think you get the point. So what we want to do is use... Whoops. Accidentally hook that up. What we want to do is use this node right here to influence the location of this cube right here. Now, again, animation nodes needs to be aware that that cube even exists, so we need another object node, so shift D to duplicate. And then we're going to switch this over to a cube 001, which is this one right here. Okay, 
So we're taking information in from here, from this cube right here, and we wanted to manipulate the output, the transforms output of cube 001. So what kind of node do you think we actually need for this? That's right, if you said it, it's a transforms output. So we can actually type that in with control A. Hopefully it's called what I think it is, transform output. Nope, I think we probably need object transform. I don't know what all these are called by default in my brain. I probably need to practice that. But either way, object transforms output. So we have this node we're familiar with. Again, connect this object to say that we're referencing cube 001 in our manipulated transforms output. And we're going to enable just the location setting right here. So right now, again, just like last time, we can manipulate this location just from here. And it's going to be updating this frequently. It's going to be doing our T for toolbar. It's going to be doing our auto execution right here very, very frequently. So it's going to override any settings that we want to type in. So with cube 001 selected, we can't actually manipulate the location because it's just going to get overridden by animation nodes. Just some review. Okay, so what we want to do is instead of having this location input or these three sliders for our location input, what we want to do is have it reference this node right here. And probably the most obvious way to do that is take our location. Again, this is kind of storing vector data as we saw in our viewer. I'm just going to open that up again. So it's kind of storing vector data. So we take this and put it right into our location input in our output node. It's kind of a mouthful, but it should make sense. And you see that it almost disappeared. But really, if we're thinking about what this node network means, what it did is it took our first cube, looked at where its location is, and pretty much copied over that location over here into our cube 001. In other words, now they're perfectly overlapping, sharing the same location. Okay, so that's fine, but of course, we're not going to really get anything out of this. If we select our cube, so right now we have our first cube selected, you're going to see that it looks like we're only moving one cube. But again, there's actually two cubes. They're just perfectly overlapping. If we disable auto execution, we should be able to move just this cube with this one not following along. But let's just bring that back. Okay, so clearly this is, you know, it works, but this is not what we want to do with it. So we kind of want to manipulate. We want to manipulate this transforms input node so it's not just copying over the same location data. Well, we can do a bunch of different things. We can have it, you know, invert the location. So for example, I'm going to go to the top view to explain this. So let's say our cube is here. Maybe we want it to reflect over the origin so that our cube 001 is here and it's always kind of inversely, I don't know if inversely is the right word, it's in the opposite position. In other words, we're just taking the location and multiplying the x by negative 1, the y by negative 1, and the z by negative 1. That kind of flips the value of our x, y, and z coordinates. Well, let's say we wanted to do that, for example. Well, clearly we need to do some math to take this vector, do some math to it, and then have this output be something else that it's feeding into here. So to do that, shift A, well, we're doing math with what? With the vectors. So go to vector, and then there's a bunch of stuff you can do here, but we're going to go for the very simple vector math. Okay, so you see that this vector math node, again, this is a new node, baby steps here. This vector math node has two inputs, a A and a B and it's going to be doing something to them. So right now it's going to be adding those vectors. We can also subtract, multiply, divide, and so on. And by the way, just so we understand what's going on here, let's hook up a viewer. Again, that's W viewer right there. So it's taking A, B, and adding them, and then we're viewing what this is. So if we take X and bring it up, you see it's actually manipulating this. And the way vector addition works, if you didn't know, is it's going to take each corresponding slider, and in this case, add them. So here it's taking 1.05, that's the x, and adding it to 0, which gives us 1.05. And for the rest of these, we get 0, which kind of makes sense. So if we do negative 1.05, what's it going to give us in the x-coordinate? It's going to give us 0, because we're taking a number, adding its additive inverse, and then those add into 0. If we make this 5, we're going to get 6.05, etc. Again, this is element-wise, is how you call it in linear algebra, uh, math usually. But this is element-wise addition. So what we're going to do is, let's just close this down. We're going to have A being the first input here, be our location vector. So we're putting that in here. And then we could do a bunch of stuff, but again, we said we wanted to invert the position in some sense. So that is a multiplication. Where's multiplication? It's somewhere in here multiply and we want to multiply the x by negative 1 the y by negative 1 and the z by negative 1 and by the way i do think i have a tip for this if you click and drag you can actually manipulate all three at once so 
you know, that that's just something you can do. But again, negative one for all of these. So right now, let's actually view what we have in our debugger. So with our cube right here, this is the one. This cube is what we're referencing in this input node where we're pulling data from. So right here, we see its location is minus 0.45. And here you see 4.5. So we took it and multiplied it by negative one. Same for the y and same for the z. So we inverted in terms of multiplication those numbers. And then we can take this because this is now a vector. You see we have x, y, and z coordinates. We can take this and use this result as the location. And you can see that it kind of mirrored it across the origin. And again, since we have auto execution enabled, we should. Yeah, there you go. You see they're kind of doing the inverse, dancing around each other like some kind of ballerina duet or something. Animation nodes can be beautiful, I guess. But you see they're kind of magnets repelling each other. I don't know how many ways I can describe this poetically, but if we make this very simple, so I'm just going to set this to zero. Notice that when we set it to the origin, zero, 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 they're perfectly overlapping because if we take this and multiply it by negative one, it still turns out to zero, zero, zero. So this output is getting the same location data. So what I want to show is that these are perfectly symmetric to each other. So if we move it across the X, you're going to see we get that symmetry across the Z axis over here. And then same for Y. And then same for Z. And we can manipulate this. It doesn't have to be so simple. So for X, we can have it instead of flipping, we can have it flip and kind of magnify by two. So that's minus two. If you don't really understand what that does, it's probably better to just show you from this view. So again, when they're at zero, multiplying by negative two is essentially doing nothing, right? Because zero times negative two is zero. But as we go further away, you see that this one is moving further away from the z-axis than this one. We can make it more obvious with minus three. So now you can really see what they're doing over here. But yeah, this is simple element-wise coordinate manipulation. So instead, let's try to do something a bit more interesting. So let's add in a new, we could have just reset it, but we're going to add in a new vector math node use our location as the input. And then this time let's add instead of multiply and let's add, mm, well, before we consider that, if we just put this in here, what do we expect to happen? Think about it. Well, it's gonna go to the same location because adding zero, zero, zero means don't do anything to it. So take this location and copy it over here. So instead what we can do is have it kind of displace it instead of doing this inversion thing we were doing before. So let's say that it copies the location over the first cube, but offsets it by let's say two or let's say four on the X axis. Well, then you see that they're kind of, this is kind of a parenting relationship in some sense, but they are parented with a bit of displacement in the X, but we can also change that for Y and Z. So now it's gonna take this location and just add this vector to it. So it's still gonna be paired up, but just displaced over. And yeah. And I guess before we wrap this video up, cause I feel like that's a good burst of information to elevate our understanding from the last tutorial. Obviously we can also do this with rotation and with scale. So I kinda wanna do rotation since it's not vector, it's Euler type operation. So shift A and then look for, if I can find it, probably rotation. And then there's probably, yeah, there's an Euler math, kind of the analog, the, the thing that goes with vector math. So Euler math, same type of thing. It's pretty much the same node except we're dealing with rotation data. So let's take our rotation of our cube. Again, we're taking our cube object as a input in some sense. I guess it is an input pulling the transform data from that. And then we're going to add in the Euler math sense, let's add, I don't know, 45 degrees on the X rotation and then plug that in for, we no longer need location, but now we need rotation and we'll plug that in right there. Okay. So notice that first of all, we don't have any location information in here anymore, which means that if we move our cube, it's not going to manipulate the location of this one, but we do have some kind of rotation dependence, but only on the X. So if we R for rotate and then X, it's going to copy over the rotation, but this 45 degree offset. So there you go. It's not going to manipulate our Z rotation, or it seems to be manipulating our Z rotation. And that is because, again, think about why this is the case. I kind of got myself confused there. Well, it's actually copying over directly our Z rotation and then just adding nothing to it. So basically all these rotations are copied over, but one of them is offset by 45. And then finally, you can do the same kind of thing for scale. 
So this is kind of the node network that we have now built up to. We're using objects as inputs, and then we're either looking at the transform coordinates with this input node or manipulating the transform coordinates with this output node with a separate object. But hopefully you guys understood what I was getting at. I know it got a bit confusing at some points, but that is animation nodes for you. So in the next one, we're going to, I don't know yet, I need to figure out what we're going to do. We're going to take the complexity and just bring it up just a tiny bit or maybe even talk about applications. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to fund more tutorials like these, I have a Patreon. You can donate over there. That'd be very nice. There are behind the scenes content and all kinds of things. But hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.